but third straight week going against Heritage High, our challengers. Let's begin with our opening toss-up question for both sides. Here it is. Astronauts are often heroes. For 10 points, what recent bestseller by Tom Wolfe chronicles the making of our astronaut? Mr. Jensen of Model High. Cosmos. That is incorrect. Can you take that, Heritage? Mr. Prongo. Right Stuff. The Right Stuff. That is exactly the name of the book we were looking for. Ten points for Heritage. Stay with us here on We appreciate you all being with us here today on High Q. We hope we have a very good match for you today. Model High back for a third straight week going against Heritage High School, our challengers from Conyers. Let's meet our contestants from both sides, beginning with our defending champions for Model. Captain Ramsey, would you lead off the introductions, please? I'm Carla Ramsey, and I'm a senior at Model High School. I'm Joe Goswick, and I'm a sophomore at Model High School. My name is Steve Jensen. I'm a junior at Model High. My name's Beth Watley, and I'm a senior at Model High. Our defending champions for Model High, let's give them a good hand. And our congratulations for making it back here for a third straight week. Now let's meet our challengers from Heritage. And Captain Bard, how about you leading it off, please? My name is David Bard. I'm a senior at Heritage High School, and I plan to attend Georgia Tech. My name is Andy Christian. I'm a senior at Heritage High School, and I also plan to attend Georgia Tech. My name is Chad Carlson. I'm a senior at Heritage High School. My name is Raymond Prongo. I'm a senior at Heritage High, High School, and I plan to attend Emory University. There you have our challengers from Heritage High. Let's have a nice round of applause for them. And wish them good luck. All right, now here's the way we play here on High Q. We have an opening toss-up question that is always worth 10 points, like the one that Mr. Prongo just scored 10 points for for his school with the correct answer to the right stuff. And then that will earn you the opportunity for bonus points. And so since Heritage scored correctly on the opening toss-up, Heritage, you now have the opportunity for what is a 30-point bonus. Here it is. Now that General Electric has divested, divested itself of its TV manufacturing division, only two U.S. companies still make color televisions. Now for 15 points each, name these two holdouts against the Japanese Tide. Zenith and RCA. Zenith is correct for 15 points. The other correct answer is Curtis Mathis. Curtis Mathis is the other company. Nevertheless, you pick up 15. It is 25 to nothing, but model, you can get in it right here. Let's go to another toss-up for both sides. Here it is. In England, it was not made a crime until 1563, possibly because so few people back then could write. For 10 points, name this Mr. Christian of Heritage. Plagiarism. That is incorrect. I will finish the question now for model high, and you lose five points for interrupting the toss-up incorrectly. Here now, model is the correct, uh, the, re the remainder of the question. We are asking you to name this crime defined as the making or altering of a written instrument with intent to defraud. Ms. Watley. Forgery. Forgery is the correct answer. So you pick up 10 points there on the uh, toss-up. And here now is a 20-point bonus for your school. Here it is. Pencil and paper ready. Multiply the number of stars in a 1957 U.S. flag by the number of red stripes in that same flag, and then divide by the number of white stripes. And for 20 points, give me your answer. <coughs> Captain Ramsey, I need the answer, please. Three. No, the correct answer is 56. 56. And the way you get that, of course, you had 48 stars. We ask you to multiply that by the red stripes, seven red stripes. That gives you 336. Divide by the number of white stripes, six white stripes, gives you a total of 56. So 56 was the correct answer. Nevertheless, you are on the scoreboard now, 20 to 10. Let's go back to another toss-up for both sides. Here it is. An isosceles triangle has, for a quick 10 points, how many sides? Equal sides. Mr. Goswick. Two. Two is the correct answer. Two is uh, right for 10 points. And now let's go to a 20-point bonus for you. Here it is. We couldn't, but there are organisms which thrive in the absence of free oxygen. Your score will grow by 10 points for each correct answer. One, what are these organisms called? Anaerobic. Anaerobic or organisms. Two, anaerobic organisms are often the cause of several nerve toxins found in improperly canned foods. What are these toxins called? Salmonella that is incorrect. It's botulence or botulism. Botulence or botulism. And I can tell by your reaction that all of you kind of knew that. You just couldn't come up with it. Back to another toss-up for both sides. Get ready, Heritage. Have you had any cookies or cake today? Well, if so, you've likely consumed this ingredient. For 10 points, what's the common name for sodium bicarbonate? Mr. Jensen of Model. Baking soda? Baking soda is the correct answer. That's what we were looking for there. 
That is good for 10 more points, and now a 20-point bonus. Here it is. The 40th chapter of the book of Job describes the fantastic creature as stiff as cedar wood his tail, close-knit the sinews of his groin, bones like pipes of bronze, gristle like plates of steel. For 20 points, name this beast believed to have been an elephant. I need your answer, please. I don't know. It's the behemoth. Behemoth is what we were looking for there. 40 to 20, back to another toss-up for both sides. I'll ask, please, both sides, please check your monitors. As of this taping, this hijacked jet sits off the runway in Algiers. Some of the hostages are members of a royal family. For 10 points, Mr. Captain Bard of Heritage. Kuwait. Kuwait is correct. We were asking for which royal family. It's the Kuwait, the royal family. And Heritage, you have an opportunity now for a 30-point bonus. Here it is. We're going to test your chronological logic, all right? I'll name trios of historical events, and then for 10 points apiece, tell me which came first of the three that I'll give you, okay? One, the founding of Plymouth, the founding of Pennsylvania, or the founding of Virginia? Plymouth. Plymouth is incorrect. It is Virginia in 1607. Second part. The passage of the Embargo Act, the election of John Adams, or the election of Jefferson? Jefferson. That is incorrect. It was John Adams, 1797. And finally, for your final 10 points here, the First Continental Congress, the French Revolution, or the British capture of Quebec? Which of those three? French Revolution. That is incorrect. It was the capture of Quebec in 1760. So you do not score on the bonus. It is 40 to 30. Back to another toss-up for both sides. How short is short? Well, tell me for 10 points, which has the shortest wavelength? A microwave, a radio wave, or a UHF television? Captain Bard of Heritage. Microwave. A microwave. The first one is correct. We have a tie score. Here's a 25-point bonus for you. Her novels often span several generations of American families, whether located in Texas, Alaska, Oklahoma, or on the Mississippi. Their titles include Cimarron, Ice Palace, Showboat, and Giant. For 25 points, name this American novelist. Adora Welty? No, it's incorrect. Edna Ferber. Edna Ferber, who we were looking for. We are tied at 40. Here's another toss-up for both sides. A famous charge on the Union position on Cemetery Ridge. His division was all but annihilated. For 10 points, name this Confederate general, at Captain Carlson, I Pickett. mean, Mr. Charles Cosum of Heritage. Pickett. Pickett is correct. George E. Pickett. That is right. I was going to say uh, at the Battle of Gettysburg, uh, but you are correct, and that is right. Here is a two-part bonus now, and it's worth 20 points. And it's about Germany. One, name the country that is located along West Germany's most northern border. Denmark. Denmark is correct. And two, what is the name of one of the world's most famous wooded areas called in German the Schwarzwald? Black Forest. The Black Forest. The Black Forest is correct for all 20 points there. 70 for Harridge, 40 for Model. Back to another toss-up. Here you go, Model. Imagine you're in your Sopwith Camel, all right, on the tail of the Red Baron. His plane makes a complete revolution along its longitudinal axis. For 10 points, what maneuver has the pilot executed? Mr. Goswick of model. A bank. That is incorrect. Can anyone take that at Heritage? Mr. Christian? A full spin. Uh, that is also incorrect. Nobody loses any points because you didn't interrupt. But the correct answer is a barrel roll, a barrel roll. And you now all of you look at me like, yeah, that's right. All right, let's go back to another toss-up. Here it is. According to what he called the introductory, the author found a certain affair of fine red cloth, much worn and faded, while Captain Bard of Heritage. The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. The Scarlet Letter is what we were looking for, and it is, in fact, by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Shotgun approach, but it worked that time because you gave me the Scarlet Letter first. Okay, here you go, a 25-point bonus for you. No one has ever been unanimously elected into the Baseball Hall of Fame, but five players have come close with over 94.5% of the vote. Now, for five points each, name the five great players. I designate Mr. Carlson. Okay, Mr. Carlson. Mickey Mantle, Ted Williams, Sandy Koufax, um, Lou Gehrig, Joe DiMaggio. Uh, in baseball parlance, uh, you took the collar. That was 0 for 5. Uh, the correct answers were Ty Cobb, Hank Aaron, Honus Wagner, 
Babe Ruth, and Willie Mays. Those were the correct answers. Nevertheless, though, you had some great players in there. I'd have certainly voted for all of them. Let's go back to another toss-up. 80 Heritage, 40 for model. Here you go. This is an audio toss-up. Now listen to this, and then I'll ask you a question. Pay attention. Right now, this song was awarded the Oscar, Mr. Prongo. I mean, Dirty Dancing? That is incorrect. I'll complete the question now for model. Uh, and here it is. This song was awarded the Oscar for the best original song for the movie Dirty Dancing. For 10 points, give me the complete title of that song. Mr. Goswick. I had the time of my life. I've had the time of my life. That is correct. And that is correct, and we are, yes, it is 75 to 50, and we are at the halfway point of high Q. We got a good match, so stay with Our judge from Emory University and also the coach of Emory's College Bowl team. They're headed to the Nationals, and good luck there. Thank you very much. Good luck to you here. All right, we got a good one going for you. Thank you, Lloyd. We got a good one going for you. Heritage 75 and Models uh, 50. We got just a second here, and uh, if you follow me here just a second, I noticed... Uh, from my perch high atop here. What is this picture? Now, I want to I want to know I've been noticing you looking at this picture and I don't know, can we get a no, can no. You, on one? Can you get a shot of the picture here? And okay, and who who is this, Captain? A friend of mine. A friend of yours. <laughs> well, that's good cuz we wouldn't want you to have like pictures of strangers. He carries but gun. uh is this is this see who this is. Mark Wayne. Who is that? Wallace? Yes, sir. And that's his picture. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. And uh, does he help you with answers and things there? No. No, not at all. All right. <laughs> Nevertheless, I could see that. I kept wondering, I wonder who's pictured. I thought perhaps it was mine, but uh, nevertheless, I guess well, you don't have a good picture of me. All right, let's get back to the second half of High Q. Heritage 75 and Model 50 will begin with another toss-up for both sides. Here it is, so get ready. A painful and sometimes fatal condition is caused by the formation of nitrogen bubbles in the bloodstream and body tissues. For 10 points, Mr. Carlson of Heritage. Benz. The Benz, that's what we were looking for. The diver's disease, that's exactly what it is. Has several other names, also known as Rapture of the Deep sometimes. 85 to 50, you have now earned the opportunity for a 25-point bonus. Here it is. Four sitting presidents have been denied renomination by their own parties. All four had succeeded their deceased predecessors. Now, for five points apiece, or 25 points for all four, name them. Johnson, uh, Chester Arthur and Gerald Ford. I will give you 10 points there for Johnson and Arthur. Gerald Ford is, is incorrect. Uh, John Tyler and Millard Fillmore were the others. So Tyler, Fillmore, uh, Andrew Johnson, incidentally, for those of, uh, wondering which Johnson, Andrew Johnson, and Chester Allen Arthur. Let's go back now to a toss-up. It is 95 to 50, this toss-up for both sides, so get ready, model. The headline of his New York Times obituary was simply his name followed by an asterisk. This late great Yankee was never elected to Baseball's Hall of Fame, in part, some say, because he beat Babe Ruth at his own game. For 10 points, name the man who hit 61 in 61. Mr. Carlson of Heritage. Roger Maris. Roger Maris is the correct answer there. That is good for 10 points. And here now is a 20-point bonus. And uh, like your other answers a while ago, he was also not elected to the Hall of Fame. Uh, the Plains of Abraham overlooking the St. Lawrence River was the site of a famous battle between French and English forces during the French and Indian War. For 10 points per answer, one, name the battle. Battle of Quebec. Battle of Quebec or the Battle of the Plains. And two, name the two commanders, both of whom were killed. Uh, I don't know. I see a lot of blank, blank looks. Uh, it was Montcalm was the French, and the English was Wolfe. James Wolfe was the English. Let's go back now to another toss-up question for both sides. Here it is. A kind of dog, a type of underwear, and a rebellion all have the same name. Mr. Christian of Heritage. Boxer. Boxer is correct. We were looking for that name. Here now is an opportunity, this for a 30-point bonus. I'll name an element. For 15 points each, I want you to tell me who is credited with discovering it. All right, one, calcium. Mindelew? That is incorrect. Sir Humphrey Davy. 
Davey was the correct answer. Two, radium. Curie? Curie. Marie and Pierre Curie. That is right. So you do pick up 15 points, and we go back to another toss-up. It is 140 to 50. Here's the toss-up. It is the only city in the world that is defended by anti-ballistic missiles, and its skies are said to be the most heavily... Captain Bard of Heritage. Moscow. Moscow is correct. Uh, most heavily guarded in the world. What was, uh, what was interesting about the rest of that question is we were going to tell you, of course, about the young man, Matthias Russ, who calmly piloted his own little Cessna right into Moscow with no problem. Here's a 20-point bonus for you. The ever debonair Cary Grant made 72 movies, including a number of classics. Now, for 10 points each, identify these. One, the 1959 Hitchcock classic, which saw Grant pursued by a murderous crop-dusting plane. North by Northwest. North by Northwest. And two, the 1955 Hitchcock film, which starred Grant as a retired cat burglar chasing a real cat burglar. To catch a thief. To catch a thief. To catch a thief. That is correct. So you do still pick up 10 points there. And back to another toss-up. Here it is now. It is 160 to 50, I believe. Heritage in the lead. Check your monitors, please, for this clue. In his newly released book, this Mr. Goswick of Model. Speak. Speaks is correct. We were going to ask you. The uh, former White House spokesman admitted that he sometimes made, made up quotes for the president. That is who we were looking for, Larry Speaks. Here's a 20-point bonus for you, model. Here's a bonus about three proverbs which are still used today. I'll start the proverb, and then for 10 points each, I'll ask you to complete it. One, this is Jonathan Swift's. You, you can't make a silk purse... Out of a sow's ear. I'm sorry? Out of a ear. That's right, out of a sow's ear, okay. I, I read it. That's all right. And two, in 1546, John Haywood coined the proverb, you can lead a horse to water. But you can't make him drink it. You absolutely can't make him drink it. That is right. For another 10 points, so you score on, on the bonus. You now have 80, and back to another toss-up for both sides. Here it is. The motto adapted for the seal of the United States in 1782 is e pluribus unum. Now, for 10 points, what is the English translation of this Mr. Goswick of model? From many one. I'm sorry? From many, one. Uh, yeah, I'll accept that. Out of many, one. That's right. One made out of many. That is correct. And here's a 20-point bonus. The lower house of Britain's parliament is called the House of Commons. For 20 points, what do we call the lower house of Canada's parliament? House of Commons. House of Commons. Yeah, you weren't going to bite on that trick question, were you? 110 to 160. Back to another toss-up. I'll give you some facts about an eastern state. And then for 10 points, I want you to name it. Its nickname is the Diamond State. Its flower is the peach blossom. Its capital is Dover. And its largest, Mr. Carlson of Heritage. Delaware. Delaware is correct. Its largest city is Wilmington. Here is a 25-point bonus for you. From about 1850 to 1930, before radio, television, and movies made them obsolete, these double-image postcard-sized pictures and their special viewers could be found in thousands of American homes. Now, for 25 points, Name this forerunner of the 3D movie. Stereoscope. A stereoscope or stereograph. I could have accepted either one. Let's go back to another toss-up now for both sides. Here it is. In mathematics, it's a number or other known factor written in front of an algebraic expression. For 10 points, what's it called? Captain Bard of Heritage. Variable. That is incorrect. Mr. Goswick. Constant. That is also incorrect. I have here a coefficient. A coefficient is the correct answer. Let's go back to another toss-up for both sides. Here it is. Check your monitors. While his former wife was busy winning the Oscar, Mr. Christian of Heritage. Sonny Bono. Sonny Bono is who we were looking for. He, of course, was just elected as the mayor of Palm Springs. So it was Sonny Bono, 180 to 110. And let's give you now a 30-point bonus. Here it is. We all love happy endings. Here are the happy endings of two of Shakespeare's plays, and for 15 points apiece, I'll ask you to identify the play. One, the Duke woos Isabel, Angelo is ordered to love his wife, and Claudio is to marry Juliet. I designate Mr. Christian. Two gentlemen of Verona. That is incorrect. Measure for measure. Measure for measure. And two, Orlando marries Rosalind, his brother Oliver weds Celia, the usurper retires to a monastery, and the deposed duke is restored. Richard II. Now, that is as you like it, as you like it. Perhaps uh, Shakespeare had the wrong titles on some of those. I'm not sure. Let's go back to another toss-up for both sides. According to an old hymn, 
for 10 points. Whose body lies a moldering in the... Mr. Carlson of Heritage. John Brown. John Brown's body lies a moldering in the grave while his soul goes marching on. That is correct. Here's a 30-point bonus for you now. Some horses, in fact and, fiction, in fact and fiction, have become almost as famous as their riders. Now, for 10 points apiece, I'm asking you, whom did the horses carry? One, Bucephalus. Bucephalus. Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great, Alexander the Third. Two, Traveler. General Lee. Robert E. Lee. Three, Scout. Tonto. Tonto, you pick up all 30 points. And we have reached the end of high Q. We'll be back to wrap up. Right Congratulations after. to Heritage High and Captain Ramsey. I'm sorry it didn't work out this week. Still, you people had a very fine run here on high Q, and our congratulations to you, and thanks for being with us. Next week, Heritage, you'll take on Upson High. Ten points. What name, meaning great house, was given to the kings of ancient Egypt, barred from Heritage? Pharaoh. You are right. Very good. Ten points. You have the lead. And we will return right after these messages to begin high against Heritage. Heritage had a tough school last week, so let's introduce the players from Upson here. Captain Reeves, introduce yourself and the rest of your team. My name is Mike Reeves. I'm a junior at Upson. Hi, I'm Philip Hoff. I'm a 12th grade at Upson High. My name is John Allen. I'm a junior at Upson High. My name is Johnny Graham, and I'm a senior at Upson High. All right, good luck to you. All right. Now the folks, the defending champions from Heritage. Captain Bard, introduce yourself. My name is David Bard. I'm a senior, and I plan to attend Georgia Tech. All right. My name is Andy Christian. I'm a senior, and I also plan to attend Georgia Tech. My name is Chad Carlson. I'm a senior at Heritage High School, and I plan to attend the University of Wisconsin. My name is Ray Prongo. I'm a senior, and I plan to attend Emory. All right. Good luck to you, Heritage. All right. Back to play high Q now. Heritage won the opening, and now for a 20-point bonus question, cute little girls are the stock and trade of many authors. For 10 points apiece, apiece, in which classic would you find Bonnie Blue Butler? We don't know. All right, the Gone with the Wind. All right, what about Little Nell? Little Women. Incorrect. The Old Curiosity Shop. Good try. All right, now we'll go back to a toss-up question. Both schools are eligible, and here it is. In Bertillon, system is central to modern criminology. For 10 points, it's based upon what human identifying characteristic? Christian from Heritage. Fingerprint. You are right. Very good. 10 points. All right, Heritage now with 20 points, eligible for another 20-point bonus question. Here are the official names of two small but influential Christian sects. For 10 points apiece, you give me the popular name by which these religions are known. The Religious Society of Friends. Jesuit? No, the Quakers. The Quakers, all right. Second part is the United Society of Believers in Christ, second appearing. Unitarian? Uh, incorrect. The Shakers. The Shakers. All right. All right. Both schools now eligible. Toss-up question. And here it is. The sign on the gate said, Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Barred from heritage. The gates of hell. Oh, uh, that's correct. Hell or Hades. Very good. <laughs> Gate to where? All right, Heritage, you're on a roll here. Here's another 20-point bonus question for you for five points apiece. Identify these jacks of fact and fiction. The personification of nippy or icy weather. Jack Frost. Oh, you bet. I know that one for sure. The real name of the artful dodger in Oliver Twist. Time's up. We don't know. All right, that's Jack Dawkins. All right, number three is the children's Jack, which is released by the turn of a crank. Jack in the box. Ooh, right. All right. Number four is the wild flower whose technical name is Arisaima trifilium. Or trifilum. I don't know. All right. That's Jack in the pulpit. All right. Good try. All right. Toss up question now. These five brothers, Albert, Alfred, Otto, Charles, and John were amateur uh, musicians and comedians who started their own small family circus. For 10 points, 
What was the surname of these phenomenally successful big top entertainers? Or entrepreneurs? Alan from Upson. Ringling Brothers. Ringling Brothers. That's correct. Very good. Very good. All right, Upson, you're on the board now with 10 points. You have a chance to get 25 additional points with this bonus question. The West Indies stretch for 2,500 miles and contain thousands of islands. The four largest islands of this, uh, okay, here it is, Archipelago, thank you, Judge, are often referred to as the Greater Antilles for five points each and a five-point bonus for all four. List these four islands. Time's up, Upson. Trinidad. Incorrect. Time's up. Yeah. All right, the answer now. Cuba, Hispaniola, Jamaica, and Puerto Rico. All right, good try, though. Toss-up question, both schools eligible. One nanosecond, one second, one minute, or one hour. For 10 points, how long does it take light to reach the Earth from the moon? Bard from Heritage. One nanosecond. Incorrect. Upson, can you take it? Reeves. One minute. Incorrect. One second. One second. All right. Another toss-up question. St. George Island, St. Lawrence Island, St. Matthew Island, St. Paul Island, and 18,000-foot-high Mount St. Elias. For 10 points, in what state can you find all five? Time's up. Alaska. Alaska is the right answer there. All right, we'll go to another toss-up question now. 100 years is a century. For 10 points, what term designates a period of 1,000 years? Barred from heritage. A millennia. You are right. Very good. All right. Now, here's a good, this is a 30-point bonus question. If this bonus seems monotonous, it's because every answer has the prefix mono in it. For 10 points each, what's the term for a sugar not decomposable by hydrolysis into simpler sugars? Monosaccharide. You are right. Very good. All right, number two. What's the adjective that describes a creature whose stomach has only one compartment? Time's up. Monocelon. Incorrect. Monogastric. Monogastric, all right. Number three. What's the term for a scholarly treatise on a small area of learning? Time's up. Monotone. Uh, monograph. Monograph, all right. Now we'll go to another toss-up here. 200 million were sent in 1929, but only 3 million in 1985. Oliver North, however, received a stack of them last July, which he proudly displayed to reporters. What is this declining form of rapid written communication? Barred from heritage. Telegram. You are right. Telegram. <laughs> All right. You won that. Here's a 25-point bonus question. Pencil and paper ready on this one. All right. A sum of money amounting to $4.30 consists of nickels, dimes, and quarters. There are four times as many dimes as nickels and six fewer quarters than dimes. For 25 points, how many of each coin is there? Time's up. We don't know. All right. Four nickels, 16 dimes, and 10 quarters. 10 quarters, $4.30. All right, toss-up question now. The word's the same. In law, it's an offer in payment of a debt. In sailing, it's a small rowboat carried by a yacht. When describing a stake, it means not hard or tough. Barred from heritage. Tinder. Tender. Very good. All right. Heritage, 80 to 10 on Upson. All right. Now here's a 30-point bonus question for you. Here are some quotations about holding public office by three historical figures. You'll earn 10 points for each quote you identify with its author. First one is, who said, sir, I would rather be right than be president? 
Henry Clay. You are right, Henry Clay. All right, number two. Who said, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen? Uh, Roosevelt. Incorrect. Harry Truman. Harry Truman on that one. All right. Who said, if nominated, I will not run. If elected, I will not serve. William Tecumseh Sherman. Uh, we'll take that. It's General William Sherman. Very good. All right. Tecumseh. All right. Toss-up question now. Oak, ash, elm, or walnut for 10 points from which of these woods are base... Ooh, time is up. And uh, do we get to finish this question? No. All right, we'll be back for the second half. Hi, Q. Hope you stay with Hi, Q. And I'll tell you, folks, he doesn't get as much time as Judge Wapner, but he's our judge here on Hi, Q. This is Lloyd Bush, coach of the Emory University academic team, always over there helping us with pronunciations and keeping things in order here, and we appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Lloyd. Glad to be Okay. The whistle blew in the middle of our last question, so in case you were wondering, oak, ash, elm, or walnut, from which of these woods are baseball bats usually cut? The answer is ash. Okay. Let's go over and meet some of the folks over here. Upson got 10 points. Heritage, 100 points. Not a big lead here when you're considering three or four questions could make that up. And we have uh, two unusual <coughs> folks here. This sir here is going into the Air Force Academy, right? Well, I've, I have uh, been accepted to a summer program for the Air Force Academy. That sounds fun. All right. The opposite end over here, Heritage, Mr. Christian up there, he's involved in a pretty neat play. We're doing The Sound of Music this year, and I'm Captain Georg Von Trapp. You want to sing a few bars? No, that's all right. All right. Well, let's play high cue then. All right? Get back to it. All right. We uh, were, had the whistle blow in the middle of our last toss-up question, so we'll go to a new one right now. I hope this toss-up question is not a burden to you. Please spell the word inconvenient. B uh, barred from heritage. I-N-C-O-N-V-E-N-I-E-N-T. You are right. Very good, Bard. All right. For winning that, you get a 30-point bonus question now. In the early stages of the Latin American independence movement, Simon Bolivar organized four adjoining colonies into the nation of Greater Colombia. Didn't last, though, for 10 <laughs> points each. Name any of the, any three of the four South American nations that were part of Greater Colombia. Bolivia. 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 Incorrect. Venezuela and Peru. Uh, Venezuela is one. That's right. You got one of them right. All right. Colombia, Ecuador, Venezuela, or Panama. The right answer is there. All right. Toss-up question now. Check your monitors now for this clue. He's been busy this week due to the situation in the Persian Gulf. Carlson from Heritage. Carlucci. That's right. Frank Carlucci. Secretary of Defense. All right. Here's a bonus question now worth 20 points. A bean is... Just a bean, until you put two L's in front of it. Then it becomes the famous preppy mail order house, L.L. Bean. I'll give you four company names, and for five points apiece, tell me the two initials that precede each name. First one is Goodrich. B.F. B.F. You are right. Hines. J.H. Uh, incorrect. H.J. Hines. Oh. All right. Close, though. All right. Reynolds. R.J. R.J. Reynolds is right. Nielsen. FT? Uh, incorrect. We know Mr. Nielsen very well here. He's A.C. Nielsen. A.C. Nielsen. All right. Toss-up question now. Of Paper Moon, Blue Moon, and A Moon for the Misbegotten for 10 points, which is the play by Eugene O'Neill. Uh, Parango from Paper Heritage. Paper Moon. Uh, that's incorrect. Can you take it, Upson? Reeves? Blue Moon. Incorrect. A Moon for the Misbegotten, or third or last one there on that one. All right. Let's go now to another toss-up question. Napoleon was defeated by the Iron Duke at the Battle of Waterloo. Barred from heritage. Wellington. Duke of Wellington, or Arthur Wellesley is the right. He was the Iron Duke. All right. Bonus question now coming for you, and it is worth 20 points. All right. After Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn... Mark Twain was used to writing about boys for 20 points in which of his novels does he describe a strange adventure of the future King Edward VI of England? 
a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court? Uh, nope. That's the Prince and the Pauper. The Prince and the Pauper. All right. Toss-up question now. Halley's Comet reappears every 76 years. For 10 points, what other comet which appeared in 1973 will not come by again for 75,000 years? Time's up. Kahootek. Remember that one? Back in 73. Toss-up question again. If you went directly east from New York City for 10 points, what foreign country would be the first land you'd reach? Christian from Heritage. Canada. Incorrect. Upson, can you take it? Reeves? No one. Portugal is the correct answer. Portugal. All right. Now, the toss-up question. Bodai was the last emperor ruling his country from the imperial capital of Wei. For 10 points, what Southeast Asian country was it? Barred from heritage. Vietnam. You are right. Or South Vietnam. All right. Now here comes a 20-point bonus question. With the recent retirement of Justice Lewis Powell, only two Nixon appointees remain on the Supreme Court. For 10 points each, who are they? up, Heritage. Um, we don't know. Ray, William Rehnquist and Harry Blackman. The right answers on that one. All right. Toss-up question again. Hydrogen is by far the most common element. But for 10 points, what is the most common compound in the universe? Reeves some Upson. Water. H2O. Water is right. Very good. All right. On the comeback trail here. Got a question now worth 30 points. 30 point bonus question. Information rather than nerve will earn you 10 points each for correct answers to these questions. What name is given to the electro, electrochemical message passed along a nerve? Time's up. What is that now? That's an impulse. An impulse, all right. Number two. The central extension of a neuron is called what? Motor neuron. Axon. Axon, all right. Number three now. The area where a nerve impulse crosses from the axon of one neuron to the dendrites, dendrites, to another neuron is known as what? Time's up. Synapse. Okay. Toss-up question. Bell and Edison are early names in the industries of communication and electricity. For 10 points, in what industry were Talberg, Zanuck, and Meyer pioneering names? Or Mayer? Time is up. Nobody? Motion pictures. Motion pictures. Metro Goldwyn Mayer. All right. Toss-up question now. A circle contains an infinite number of them, while your body contains but two. One in each forearm. For ten points, what one word fits both barred from heritage? Radius. That is right. That's hey. good. Radius or radii. <laughs> All right. Thirty-point bonus question now. King Edward VIII abdicated the British throne in 1936 in order to marry the woman he loved. For fifteen points apiece, tell me. By what regal title was King Edward known before his ascension to the throne? Duke of York. Prince of Wales. Prince of Wales, all right. Number two, by what noble title was he known after his abdication? Duke of Windsor. You are right, Duke of Windsor. Very good. <laughs> tough, tough answer. All right, toss-up question now. Its prime minister is a woman as are eight of its 18 cabinet. Yes, Reeves from Upson. Right, Red. Incorrect. I'll finish the question now. As are 18 of its 18 cabinet ministers. A pro Carlson from Heritage. No way. That's right. A proposed constitutional yeah. amendment would end the male's only claim to its throne, now held by King Olaf V, and that was this equal opportunity Scandinavian nation. That is Norway, right? All right, now we have a 30-point bonus question. I'll describe two man-made and natural landmarks, and I want you to name them. Now, for 15 points apiece, what is the name of the heroic-sized statue in South America built to symbolize peace between Chile and Argentina? 
statue of Jesus Christ? We need a more specific answer on that. Jesus of Nazareth. Incorrect. Uh, that is the Christ of the Andes. Okay. What is the name of the region in Arizona renowned for its beautiful, many-colored rock surfaces? Grand Canyon. Incorrect. The Painted Desert. Painted Desert. All right. Now we'll go to a toss-up question. Hardy's The Return of the Native is set in Britain for 10 points. And what... All right. Time is up. We'll tally up the score and be back to see who won. I do continue. Stay tuned. Scores to see who won and defending champions Heritage, 195 and Upson, 15. Well, Heritage may have a little advantage. They are the defending champions. They were here last week. And sometimes when you're here, you're probably not as nervous. Were you folks nervous today, you think? Oh, we were nervous a lot. Yeah, nervous. sometimes. Sometimes that happens. Those cameras kind of intimidate you uh, sometimes. Well, Heritage, you did really well today, 195 points. That's your second win. Now you need two more wins to go to the championships. You excited about that? Definitely. Are you gonna, how are you going to prepare for something like that? There's a lot of books on just trivia that you can read. Oh, yeah. How would you like that math question we had for you before? That was a tough rough. one. A little rough. That was a tough one. But you did have, did you said you learned something last week that uh, we had in our questions today, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Several yeah. quotes? Yeah. Several quotes. The All right. Henry Clay quote. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, keep studying, and hopefully you'll have better success next week there for your third try. All right. Thank you. Today, our defending champions back for a third straight week from Heritage High, our challengers from South Gwinnett. Let's begin with our opening toss-up questions for both sides. Here it is. According to English mythology, for 10 points, who was the wife of King Arthur? Captain Bard of Heritage. Guinevere. Guinevere is correct for 10 points. And Jay Willis, Heritage High is on the board, and we'll be back with the rest of High Q. We should have a very good match for you. Heritage High going for a fourth consecutive win, back for a third, or rather, for a third straight week uh, that they have, what, You've been here. This is the third week. Is that all right? Yes. All right. Well, what can I tell you? I've been gone for a while. And our challengers from South Gwinnett High. And uh, let's meet our contestants from both sides. We'll begin with our challengers from South Gwinnett. Captain Roberts, would you lead it off, please? Uh, my name is John Roberts. I'm a senior at South Gwinnett. My name is Chris Williams, and I'm a sophomore at South Gwinnett. My name is Christopher Clark, and I'm a sophomore at South Gwinnett. My name is Trey, and I'm Trey Hunt, and I'm a senior. <laughs> senior at South Gwinnett? Yes. Great. That's great. That's our challengers. From South Gwinnett. Uh, it's always a little tough to get those answers the first time around, but uh, next time you'll have them boiled down smooth as silk. All right, let's go to our defending champions from Heritage back for that third consecutive week. Captain Bard, lead off. Please. My name is David Barr, and I'm a senior, and I plan to attend the Georgia Institute of Technology. My name is Andy Christian. I'm a senior, and I also plan to attend Georgia Tech. My name is Chad Carlson. I'm a senior at Heritage High School, and after college, I plan to attend umpiring school. <laughs> My name is Ray Prongo. I'm a senior at Heritage High School, and I plan to attend Emory University. Our defending champions from Heritage High. Yes, sir. Um umpiring school is a great calling, wonderful calling. Incidentally, I should tell you, those of you at home, the way we play here on High Q, the opening toss-up questions are always worth 10 points. But if you score correctly there, you earn the opportunity to score bonus points in the bonus rounds, which are solely for the school that scores correctly on the toss-up. If you do buzz in during a toss-up and are incorrect, you will lose five points. That's the way we play. And since we've uh, met both sides in Heritage, since you won the opening toss-up worth 10 points, you now earn the opportunity for a 20-point bonus. Here it is. Mark Twain wrote a story about a man who finds a one million pound banknote. For 20 points, what is the largest denomination of paper money currently being issued by the U.S. Treasury? $100,000 bill. That is incorrect. It's a $100 bill. 100 being issued. The key word there is issued. And the $100 bill is the largest issued uh, money. Let's go back to uh, another toss-up now. So South Gwinnett, you can get in it here. Here we go for both sides. Jacob was his father, Joseph his older brother, and Dinah his sister. He was the youngest of the 12 sons of Jacob. And Captain Roberts of South Gwinnett. Benjamin. Benjamin is correct. We were looking for the man who was falsely accused of stealing the silver chalice. It was indeed Benjamin. So that is now good for 10 points for South Gwinnett. Here's a 20-point bonus for you. I'm going to read you descriptive comments by two famous explorers about famous places. And for 10 points apiece, I'd like for you to name the place to which is being referred. All right? One, Great God, This is an Awful Place by Robert Scott. An Antarctica. That is correct. Uh, and two, Looks Like Plaster of Paris by a U.S. astronaut. 
The Moon. The Moon. That was James Lovell. And you are correct there for an additional 20 points. South Gwinnett now 30, Heritage 10. Back to another toss-up for both sides. Here it is, gentlemen. For 10 points, what two-word term is used to designate zero degrees Kelvin or minus two... Captain Roberts of South Gwinnett. Absolute zero. Absolute zero, the uh, minus 273.16 degrees Celsius. That is right. And here now is another 20-point bonus opportunity for you. In Greek mythology, he was the eldest son of Aeson and sought the golden fleece. For 10 points apiece, who was he? Jason. And upon what ship did he sail? Argo. The Argo. Argo. The, Argo. Yes. the Argo. The Argo. Yes, I already heard that is the correct okay. answer. Uh, so that is 60 points now for South Gwinnett, 10 for Heritage, back to another toss-up for both sides. Here you go. Verdun, Gallipoli, and the Marne were major battles. World Mr. War. Williams? Battles uh, in World War I. I will accept that. Okay, and I will caution you now. Wait till I call on you before you give me the answer, okay? That is, uh, we were looking for well, what war. It is World War I. That is correct for 10 points. Here's a 20-point bonus for you now. He is an American composer whose name belongs among the giants of the music world. He distinguished himself with such works as Music for the Theater, John Henry, and Appalachian Spring. For 20 points, name him. I designate Mr. Clark. Thank you. Aaron Copeland. Aaron Copeland is correct. That is correct. You now have 90 points, 10 for Heritage. Back to another toss-up for both sides. Here we go. According to the standards set by the Department of Health and Human Services, and within 5%, for 10 points, what percentage of American children now live in poverty? Captain Bard of Heritage. 10. Uh, that is incorrect. Anyone take that to South Gwinnett? Mr. Williams. 15. I cannot accept that either, although that was very close. Fifth, I could, the, the actual percentage is 20.1. I could accept from 15.1 to 25.1, but uh, that is the correct percentage is 20.1, so we'll go back to another toss-up for both sides. You did not buzz in and interrupt, so you do not lose five points there, but here's the toss-up now for both sides. I ask you to get pencils and paper ready, please. In the number group 1, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, 6, 9, and 9, for 10 points, what number of the group is the mode? Captain Roberts. Six. Six is correct. The mode is the most... Those of you at home, the mode is the most frequently occurring number. There were three sixes in that sequence. That is correct. Here is a... You are now have 100. Here's a 20-point bonus for you. If I gave you a punch right in the fibula, I'd be hitting you below the belt. Now, for five points each, I'm going to name some other bones in the human skeleton. I want you to tell me if they are found above or below the belt. One, tibia. It's below. That is correct. Femur. Below, below. That's below. That is also below. Humerus. Above. That's, ab that's yeah. above. That is also above, right. That no, is above, I should say. And patella. Below. Right, below. that's below. Below is also correct. So you pick up an additional 20 points. 120 points you now have. Now, for a quick 10 points, this is another toss-up for both sides. What is the full name of the government agency that's known by the initials GSA? I cannot accept the General Services Administration. General Services Administration. Back to another toss-up. Here it is. You're playing football. If a defensive player intercepts your pass in the end zone and is immediately tackled for 10 points, how much? Mr. Christian. Two points. Two Sorry. points. That is incorrect. Mr. Hunt. Safety. Uh, that is also incorrect. I could have completed the question had you waited. Uh, and in the, you hear the, the question. If he's immediately tackled for 10 points, how many points does your team get? Uh, the answer is no points. It's a touchback. Right. It's a touchback. The ball goes out to the 20-yard line. All right, let's go back to another toss-up for both sides. Here it is. The Louisiana Purchase was dated April 30, 1803. For 10 points, what land purchase was dated December 30, 1853? Mr. Williams of South Gwinnett. Alaska. That is incorrect. Mr. Christian. The Gadsden Purchase. The Gadsden Purchase. That is good for 10 more points. Here is a 20-point bonus for you now, Heritage. A peninsula is an area of land that is nearly surrounded by water. For five points each, or 20 if you can name for me all three, identify the following peninsulas. One, this vast desert peninsula, rich in oil, is bordered by Jordan and Iraq on the north. Name it. Saudi Arabia? Uh, that is incorrect. It is just the Arabia Peninsula. 
Peninsula, Arabian Peninsula, Arabia. Two, name the state that is sometimes called the Peninsula State because it juts southward about 400 miles into the sea. Florida. Florida is correct. Three, this peninsula lies between the two north arms of the Red Sea with Israel and Egypt proper, <coughs> excuse me, on either side. Name it. Sinai. Sinai is correct. So you do score an additional uh, 10 points there. You now have a total of 20. It is 120 to 20. Back to another toss-up for both sides. In the Bakanovsky process, reproduction is accomplished by budding, and instead of one human being resulting, there will be from 8 to 96 humans, all identical. For 10 points, in which Aldous Huxley novel is this process to... Mr. Williams of Brave South New World. Brave New World. We were looking for the name of the uh, novel that it was described. That is correct for 10 more points. Here's a 20-point bonus for you. The only hits belong to the New York Yankees. The Dodgers not only lost the game, but they also became the only team in World Series history not to be, or rather to be, on the short end of a perfect game. For 10 points apiece, one who pitched the perfect game. Yogi Berra? No, Don Larson. Don Larson was the correct answer there, the only pitcher to pitch a perfect game in World Series. What Yankee, and here's part two, what Yankee and Hall of Famer was his catcher? Dizzy Dean. No. Uh, if you'd got Yogi Berra was the correct <laughs> answer there. So, uh, uh, but Yogi Berra was, and uh, among uh, his famous sayings and uh, what else, he was also happened to be the catcher for that uh, particular contest. 130 to 25. Here we go. Back to another toss-up. One is new and one is hidden. One's a stranger and one's idle. A fifth was found first in the sun. For 10 points, what common collective name is given to the gases? Neon, krypton. Mr. Roberts, Captain Roberts, South Gwinnett. The noble gases. The noble gases or inert gases, that is correct, for 10 points. Here's a 25-point bonus. For five points apiece, name the five chemical elements that are the principal constituents of... We have reached the midway point. I cannot finish that question. Since I had not finished it, you cannot answer it. But we have 140 to 25. We'll be back with the second half of Haikyuu. about you at home but to me this is one of my favorite parts of the show this is where I get to introduce a gentleman who is near and dear to all of us here at Q. and I think through the weeks of that Q has been on the air I can sort of feel the groundswell of absolute sentiment and love for this gentleman that has been developing I'd like for you to meet from Emory University our judge Lloyd Bush yeah! thank you uh, good luck to all <laughs> Yes, well, Lloyd will never be the same. That was wonderful. Uh, we've got just a second here before we get back to uh, playing high Q, and uh, I was told before the start of the show, all four members of the South Gwinnett team have either been involved or about to be involved with the Governor's Honors Program. Is that correct, Captain Roberts? Yes. That is, is, that is correct? Yes. Well, could you tell me a little bit about that? Ah, uh, it's, um, well, are you and myself have been previously, and Chris and Chris are both about um, to go? About to go this year. And also understand that two members of the Heritage team have also been involved in that, is that correct? Yeah, myself and... Yeah, well, that's great. Is it, is it very beneficial? Is it yes. Yeah, yes. And obviously quite an honor. Yeah. Well, our congratulations to those who have been and to those of you who are about to go. Also, our congratulations and uh, give the governor my regards, all right? Uh, let's go back to another toss-up. It is 140 South Gwinnett, 25 to Heritage. And let's start the second half of High Q with this toss-up for both sides. If you asked a French waiter for Café au lait, Captain Robert South Gwinnett. Coffee and milk. That is incorrect. I can finish the question now for Heritage. You'd be served coffee with milk. For 10 points, what would you get if you asked for ca uh, Café Noir? Café Noir. I'm sorry, pardon. Disallowed for consultation. Okay, it is, uh, you can't uh, consult on those. It's black coffee was the correct answer. Black coffee is what we were looking for. Back to another toss-up for both sides. Here it is. One of the hit movies of 1987 was the Steve Martin comedy entitled Roxanne. For 10 points, Mr. Christian Harris. Cyrano de Bergerac. Cyrano de Bergerac. We were asking for the 19th century play on which it was based. Was excellent anticipation there. Here's a 25-point bonus for you. For five points apiece, name the five chemical elements that are the principal constituents of DNA. Carbon, 
I'll need your answer, please. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. That is correct for 25 points. Yay. 60 for Heritage, 135 South Gwinnett. Here's another toss-up for both sides. Get ready. In order to have valleys, you obviously have to have mountains. For 10 points, the Panamint Mountains are to the west of what famous Western American Valley? Mr. Williams, South Gwinnett. Death Valley. Death Valley is correct for 10 points. Here is a 20-point bonus for you. Like Boswell, Kitty Kelly is known for her intimate biographies of contemporaries. Unlike Boswell, she does not generally get the cooperation of her subjects. For 10 points each, give me the two-word title of Ms. Kelly's best-selling biography of one, Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis. Jackie O. Jackie O is correct. Two, Frank Sinatra. His way. His way is correct. That is right for an additional 20 points. Here's another toss-up for both sides. Get ready. At first, I could see nothing. The hot air escaping from the chamber, causing the candle flame to flicker. But presently, as my eyes grew accustomed to the light, details of the room within emerged slowly from the mist. Mr. Christian of Heritage. by Alexander Dumas. Um, that is incorrect. I will finish the question now for South Gwinnett. For, an, for a moment, an eternity, it must have seemed to the others standing by, I was struck dumb with amazement. For 10 points, what 1922 discovery was archaeologist Howard Carter describing with these, Mr. Williams of South Gwinnett? The opening of King Tut's tomb. Yes. I can accept that. King Tut is what we were looking for, and that is correct for 10 more points. And here's a 20-point bonus for you. The U.S. presidential campaign of 1824 was a veritable free-for-all. Of the candidates, three were cabinet members, one was Speaker of the House, and one was a military hero. For 10 points each, one, one of the presidential candidates withdrew to become the vice presidential candidate on two tickets. Name him. Andrew Jackson. That is incorrect. John Calhoun. Two, the House elected John Quincy Adams president with Calhoun as vice president. Later, when Adams named another candidate as his secretary of state, Jackson supporters charged corrupt bargain. Who was the secretary of state? I'll have to tell you, it's Henry Clay. Henry Clay was the correct answer there. Let's go back to another toss-up for both sides. Here it is. With a poodle as his only companion, he took a trip across the United States in the 19... Mr. Christian of Heritage. John Steinbeck. John Steinbeck is who we were looking for. A leading American novelist, that indeed. Here's a 30-point bonus for you now. A philanthrope loves man or mankind, and a fellow cube loves dice. For 10 points apiece, taking the literal meaning of the word, tell me, one, what does a philosopher love? Wisdom. That is correct. Two, what does a... Philogenist love. Philogenist. The correct pronunciation is philogenist. Species. That is incorrect. It is women. Women. And three, what does a Philadelphian love? Freedom. That is incorrect. Brothers. I'm sure they probably do love uh, uh, freedom, but uh, the correct answer we were looking for, brothers, if you take the literal translation. Let's go back to another toss-up. It is 175 to 75. Here it is. For 10 points, what medical term is used to describe a substance that provokes the body to produce antibodies? Captain Bard of Heritage. Antigen. Antigen is correct. Here's a 20-point bonus for you. The atmosphere is made up of layers called the stratosphere, the ionosphere, the troposphere, the mesosphere, and the exosphere. For 10 points, which layer is closest to the Earth's surface where most of the weather, winds, and rain take place? Atmosphere. That is incorrect. Troposphere. Two, for 10 points, which layer is filled with electrically charged particles which reflect radio waves? Ionosphere. Ionosphere is correct there. And now you have 95 points, I believe. And 175.95, here's the toss-up for both sides. This video game challenges players to hack their way through treacherous jungles without getting caught up. Mr. Williams of South Gwinnett. Jungle hunt. Uh, that is incorrect. I'll finish the question for Heritage without getting caught up in a covert operation or being killed by the Sandinistas. For 10 points, what six-letter word names this tropical and topical game? Captain Bard. Contra. Contra is correct. 
That is good for 10 more points. Here's a 25-point bonus for you. Jacques Cousteau and Emile Gagnon perfected the scuba in 1943. This portable device has proven invaluable in the field, obviously, of underwater research. For five points apiece, what do the letters SCUBA stand for? Self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. That is correct for all 25 points. 170 to 130. Here's another toss-up for both sides. If your name were Mikhail Ivanovich Kotov, for 10 points, what would your father's given name be? Mr. Williams? Ivanovich. Uh, that is in... Correct. It was. I uh, can give an opportunity for heritage. Kyle. That is also incorrect. The correct answer is Ivan, because Ivanovich means son of Ivan. Okay. okay. All right. Let's go back to another toss-up. It was cast in London by Thomas Lister. Mr. Williams. The Liberty Bell. The Liberty Bell is absolutely correct for ten points. All right, here is a 20-point bonus for you. Some historians claim it was the first modern war. It marked the first large-scale wartime use of rifled artillery, landmines, hand grenades, and the Gatling machine gun. For 20 points, which war was it? World War I. That is incorrect. The American Civil War, the war between the states. Back to another toss-up for both sides. Lemur, baboon, or rhesus. For 10 points, which is not... Mr. Williams of South Gwinnett. Baboon. That is incorrect. Let's go to heritage, which is not considered a monkey. The first one. I cannot take it because of uh, consultation. Okay, the answer was Lemur. Lemur was the correct answer. All right, for 10 points, name the Victor Hugo novel in which a poet, an archdeacon, an officer, a nobleman. A miserable. Oh, uh, that is incorrect. A nobleman and a, I can finish for South Gwinnett. A nobleman and a bell ringer all love the same young gypsy girl. Mr. Williams? The Hunchback of Notre Dame. The Hunchback of Notre Dame is correct. <laughs> Here now is a 20 point bonus. Oh, and we have reached the conclusion of High Q. We'll be back with a wrap up right after this. Yeah. At high 185. Congratulations, Captain. And Captain Bard of Heritage, I'm sorry it didn't work out. Well, you guys had a great run, though. Really great run. You're very proud of the way you handled yourselves here. Now, let's go to...